and they had 50,000 views on that, you see it's something creative, fun, nostalgic, everybody knows that. That's that's a bop. Everybody knows the thing, you know? So is that. Love it. And what I love about um, Reels in this case, Sean, is, is Sassy Wolf, pretty small company. So, Great. you know, you don't, you don't have to be a big company to make an Instagram Reel. Oh, definitely, definitely. <sighs> That's the good thing about Reels. This is just a case study about an apprentice, a fellow apprentice. She um she had she worked on entrepreneur. She did the content managing and the social media channels right here here, and she's now the social media manager, and she's responsible for having for getting them like a thousand views in just July. So shout out to her, Alex. Shout out to her. And if you want to learn more about using apprentice for Instagram, go to scheduleapprentice.com. You get a free call. And you get a call and a free copy of likable social media and 50% of your first month. So, guys, if you want to, you know, do better marketing, schedule a call. Awesome. Thank you. And Marissa asked, are reels and ads the same thing or do you have to pay for ads? Unfortunately, you do have to pay for ads. Yeah. But what Sean was talking about is creating a reel organically, which may or may not take off on its own, and then using an ad to pay to have more people see your reel. Right. That's what they would do with the Full House ad in the sense they would make the reel, then attach it to ad, you see, you see that reel as their ad instead of a normal page. Now how TikTok has changed. Exactly. Which First you have to define the goal for your live. Oh, okay. Rapid growth of live streaming is important these days, but I know you've seen on TikTok, people love to go live and, and stream things. It's important these days because it allows you to connect with your audience. It's like a community as opposed to, oh, you're just my customer. That makes sense. TikTok is providing a viable composition to social media. I agree. Increase in demand for user-generated content, authenticity, personality, and reliability. Okay, the live stream of TikTok. Define the goal for your, your TikTok live stream first. You don't want to just go live and you don't really know what you're doing. You're sitting there, standing there, and just talking. You want to make sure you have set goals in the live to understand, hey, I'm going to make sure I do this, this, and this. Talk to them about this, this, and this. It allows you to have a better life. So you choose a topic, list of things to talk about, do it on your calendar so you can actually plan it out. If that makes more sense. If you're still, you know, this is an example right here. If you're selling services and you're targeting to entrepreneurs, join a list of issues that most entrepreneurs have. So it, you can connect with them and you're not just sitting there and answering questions or doing things that are wasting time in a sense. So yeah, as I said before, you want to structure your live, you want to make sure you introduce yourself by, you know, the, what the topic is going to be about overall. Have Q&As, act peers to, put, to share their content so it isn't just, just about you, it's more of a community, so everyone's sharing everything they have, and then you get to the conclusion part of it. Let's take a look at an example of live streaming on TikTok. Oops. Or play it. Oh, it's not playing. Sorry about that. But um, this is an example. This was an example of live streaming on TikTok with TikTok shopping. Um, thank you so much, Sean. We have a few questions here. Um, and while I take those questions, I'll show you another quick uh, case study from Apprentice. Uh, uh, Sydney uh, and Bradley um, did some work for uh, Zen Media and increased the average TikTok views. 1,566 percent. Pretty amazing results um, from these two apprentices at Bates and NYU. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, using um, Apprentice, go to schedulapprentice.com. Uh, um, if you mention this webinar, you'll get a free copy of Likeable Social Media and 50 percent off of your first month. Um, David asks, do you pick your audience like Facebook when you advertise? Yes. On Instagram, same, same as Facebook. In fact, it's the same ad platform. Um, to, to buy ads on Instagram, so you, you you pick your audience very very similar, the same. You can um you can even use something that you had on Facebook as Instagram, like an audience. You can save it and you can put it on Instagram too. So. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Totally. Um, Val uh, is looking to drive business to a client. Uh, title insurance. They think they think they're not on TikTok and not on and very little on Instagram. More of a B two B business driven by real estate attorneys. Any suggestions? Well, first of all. I would suggest that your audience is on TikTok and Instagram. I promise. I, I promise. TikTok and Instagram are getting older and older. And so they are on there. 
Um, remember, you're not B2B is not B2B, it's B2P. You're still marketing to people, and those people increasingly, I I would say about 40% of my peers, 45 year olds, are on TikTok, and probably 75% are on Instagram. I mean, I'm telling you, they're on there. Um, so if it's um, if it's title insurance, um, you might want to have information about uh, lo local real estate market, um, local real estate law uh, information that's uh, uh, updates on, on on local real estate law. Those are just a few examples now. And Brienne asks, uh, does TikTok Live usually bring new followers, uh, or do you need to have a, a number of followers to make it worth going live? Um, I'll put that question out to to Sean and and and. Uh, and Simon and Maddie, what do you guys say about, can TikTok Live drive new followers? So TikTok Live, you actually need, I think it's around a thousand to go live in the first place. But once you are live, your live stream can pop up on the For You page of anyone. So that means that people who aren't necessarily following you are able to then tune into your live stream and that gives them a taste of your content and your account. Great. So short answer is yes, they absolutely bring new followers once you can do it. All right. Thank you so much, Sean. I am going to uh, to turn it over to Maddie, um, who is going to walk us through how to connect with people who want to buy from you. Yes, thank you. Because social media is not designed to be a one way experience. It's about engaging with the audience and having them engage with you. So firstly, on Instagram, utilizing your DMs. So DM stands for direct messaging. And that's a way that you can reach out individually to people following you, people you follow, it doesn't matter if they're following you. And essentially, if you can bring up a partnership or something, for example, this way, they'll trust you as a person. It's almost humanizing you as a brand by giving that direct access to the audience. Um, another big thing is hashtags. So <laughs> the pound symbol, as my dad calls it. Um, hashtags are really important for getting your content out there and helping incite engagement. So people might search for a specific hashtag. And if your content is under that and it's within the niche they're looking for, it's a great way to get exposure that way. Um, and it can also help you find an audience um, or even a community of other like-minded individuals posting under those same hashtags. Um, and then finally, sharing photos and videos your customers have posted with your product, whether it's resharing it to something like an Instagram story, which means it would stay up for only 24 hours as opposed to permanently being populated on your page. Um, just to show kind of, we see you, we see that you're using our things and we want to promote you. That's a great feeling to see a brand reposting you. Um, and then creating tutorials on different ways to use your products. Um, I bought a hair product recently and I, had no idea how to use it, but watched the tutorial on their Instagram that kind of walked it through step by step, made it much more digestible. So example of hashtags, this is tone it up. They are part of the fitness community. Their hashtag TIU, obviously standing for tone it up. And of course they use it, but so do their loyal brand followers. So people buying their products and posting with them will then hashtag them TIU. Um, it's a great way to show that you see as the brand by continuously checking your brand hashtag and being able to connect with these individuals who are passionate about fitness, the community, and who really want to engage with you. Now, if you're, uh, thanks, Maddie. What I love about this too, if you're another fitness brand or if you are targeting like people in the fitness community, you can use the hashtag TIU to find like-minded individuals and connect with them as well. Exactly. It's two way. It's finding customers and it's also building a community. So then moving on to TikTok. Um, I'm a big pusher for this, but purpose over product. People can see what you're doing and it's great to showcase that, but really having an avenue to put out the purpose of what you're doing and why you're doing it. So really connecting with your audience through the vision, through your purpose, your mission. It's a really great way to publicize that. Um, having an element of surprise is always a good tip. So um, it's kind of the idea of the aha moment. Um, we all love the, oh my God, I could totally use this in my life. So being able to provide that through a TikTok video is a great way to drive people to your products. Um, of course, things like offering discount codes, obviously helping people save money and then also making them feel like they're in the know. So by following you on TikTok, they get this exclusive promotion and deal. 
Um, and then similar to Instagram, just the idea of interacting with the target customers. So the TikTok challenges, even TikTok hashtags that are relevant to your brand, the identity, the specific industry you're in. Um, it's super easy to just search popular hashtags. Um, let's say again, if you're doing fitness, if you search hashtag fitness, kind of seeing what other people are doing, redoing their trending sounds, it's a good way to get visibility and to kind of stay in line with what other people are doing. Maddie, can you talk for a minute about TikTok challenges? Because I think that's a that's something that a lot of uh, you know people from a different generation of social media are, aren't as used to. Absolutely. So TikTok challenges kind of change um, pretty frequently, but tend to stick around for a few weeks. So even if you're a little late to one, it's not too late to hop on. Um, but really what these challenges are, they can be anything from a dance to a specific sound um, to just a specific style of video. Um, and really the, uh, the beauty of the challenge is that it's not a super strict template. It's kind of the main idea behind the challenge. And then you're able to customize it to be in line with what your brand is um, and keep in line with the trends a little bit. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Caroline's asking, do you need to pay to create a hashtag? And no, you do not. So easy answer. Val asked, uh, can I manage more than one client's TikTok account under my personal account? I don't think so. I think you need to log out and log on, right? I mean, they're, they're, I don't think TikTok on their, in their app has a master way of managing multiple accounts. Yeah, so you can have multiple accounts and you can toggle between them, but you don't necessarily have one master account. Each one is weighted um, essentially equally. Um, really, it's just switching back and forth between the accounts. So to manage each individual one, you would toggle over and make sure you're on the correct account. So you wouldn't have to log out and log back in? Nope, you can keep everything stored and just switch from account to account pretty easily. Awesome. Um, and this is an example from Napoli Naturals. They are a health food store. Um, they got, I think it was around 63,000 views just by doing a quick video of their store. You know, they put a nice sound in the background. It's pleasant to watch. And it's the kind of thing that if you see that video, it's pleasant to watch and it's something that resonates with you, you're gonna wanna share it with other people. Or if you're scrolling through a health is wealth kind of hashtag and you see this video, um, it's natural for us as human beings to wanna to share these experiences. So it's a great way to get your products out there. And the way they combine their generic hashtags with their individual brand hashtag also is a great tip as well. One one thing that I, I noticed from this that I really uh, like is that they only had 4,000 followers, under 5,000 followers, and yet, you know, this video generated 62,000 views. One of the things that's been amazing to me about uh, TikTok, Maddie, is seeing how you don't need a, a, a ton of followers to go viral. You really can create good content and and, and, and the, 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 the shareability of content is, is incredible there. It's huge. TikTok really revolutionized the social media game. You don't need a huge following. You can post any video and have it generate millions of views. And though that doesn't guarantee either way that you're going to then gain the followers, you still got the million people viewing your videos. So kind of levels the playing field a little bit. All right. Thank you very much, Maddie. And now we turn, I believe, to Mr. Simon. Yeah, thank you. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, go over the three you know step-by-step uh, -step guide to you know quick content creation the three the three main areas to focus on would be the plan ahead repurpose and uh, to automate so planning ahead it's very essential to plan and block out time to create your content for the weeks ahead it's also very important to look back on what has worked in the past so is there something that your audience loved that you can redo or that you can do more of um, plot out several themes and decide which content will sit within each. Uh, so that could be sales posts. So what are you promoting this month? Expert posts. What can you create to share your expertise and show people that you know your stuff? Pain to gain posts. So what can you post to show your audience that you understand their problems and have a solution? Personality posts. So share behind the scenes shots to build the no like and um, no like and trust factors. Repurposing. So making one piece of content works in multiple ways. So a TikTok or Instagram live, uh, use a trans um, a transcription app to turn your words into a blog for your website, then link that blog from your socials. 
pick out a number of tips from the live and turn them into individual posts. Take quotes from the live and create quote images in Canva. And you know, creating templates in Canva that uh, you can reuse repeatedly will save you a huge amount of time and give your uh, and give your content a consistent brand feel. I love this slide, Simon. Guys, if there's one single slide that you take away in this entire uh, deck, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff I'd like to think, but if there's one slide, this one right here, take one piece of content, and, and Simon's giving you very, very specific examples and tools to act to turn one piece of content into. 10 pieces of content, really awesome stuff. So repurposing on Instagram. So summarize long form content in Instagram carousels. So curate a series of posts into an Instagram guide, resize YouTube videos for IGTV, screenshot and reuse your best tweets, create video teasers and clips, create story highlights of your best Instagram content, and here's a quick example of um, you know reposting a tweet. Uh, in my past experience, especially, I found that even if uh, a video doesn't do that well on TikTok, just moving it over to Instagram to the reel, you could get hundreds of thousands of views from the Instagram, and you know the content hasn't gone to waste just because it didn't do well on TikTok. Repurposing on TikTok, so repost TikTok videos on your Instagram reels, as I mentioned. Repost TikTok videos on your Instagram story. Link your TikTok into a blog. Share your TikToks on Facebook or LinkedIn. Add TikToks to your web pages or embedded on your site. And here's just a quick example of uh, reposting on TikTok. And um, so automation. So once you've decided what to post, use a content scheduler to speed up the publishing process. So almost all of these schedulers offer free trials. So give a few of them a go and pretty much find out which one is right for you. Don't forget, while schedulers do save you time on um, what you're doing, it is very important to, um, to still check in with your account and check the engagement on a daily basis. Tools that you can use. So Sprout Social, plan, organize, and deliver content and campaigns across many social networks. HubSpot, integrate your sales pipeline and paid advertising. Feedly, automatically curates content to fill up your social media calendar. Planable, commenting and approval system for scheduled social media posts. Post Planner, schedules posts posts and curates posts based on specific hashtags and their keywords. It's funny, um, right before we showed this slide, Val asked about our favorite content schedulers and we answered it for you right here. Uh, we, we use HubSpot at, uh, at Apprentice, but these are all some great tools. So how much content do you really need to achieve your desired results? More content isn't necessarily better. So it's highly recommended to focus on high quality content that your audience will find value in. Quality and consistency are the key players here. Uh, if you don't maintain an active presence on your social media profiles, customers are likely to choose another business when searching for local products and services. But posting too often can also leave your followers feeling overwhelmed and give, them, um, and give you a negative reputation and make sure that you are leaving time to promote your posts, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, or uh, any of the other social media. Instagram content tips. Try to post once a week, but it is preferred three times a week. Um, do not post more than three times per day. If you are just starting out, posting three to five times a week helps build a greater foundation so that when people do go to your page, they can see that you have a track record of posting consistently. Avoid sharing a bunch of posts at once or disappearing for a few weeks at a time. This can leave people, especially your you know, customers, um, without anything to really look at as they're going about their days. Um, Instagram stories can be posted more frequently as they do go away after 24 hours, so you'll have a different audience almost every time. TikTok content tips. 
try to post at least one quality video per day. But if you are starting out, one to three times a day is very good. When you post every day, you give your audience something to expect and look forward to. Some bigger TikTok accounts will post up to 10 times a day, but this may be a little bit too much when you are just starting out. All right, thank you very much, Simon. Um, I'm gonna take it from here and uh, with Maddie uh, at my side as well. And um, uh, we, we will continue to, to stay as long as we can to answer your questions. I see a whole bunch more questions have come in. Um, so I will zip through them real quick here uh, to scheduling, get less engagement than posting yourself. Um, I, in my experience, no, but I would, what I would always do is test, test it, do an A-B test uh, with your scheduling tool. What's the best current hashtag strategy? Three to five hashtags, no more and, and no fewer uh, hashtags that your audience is, is searching for discoverability purposes. And how many IG stories should you have? There's not a, I, I don't think there's a big limit to the number of stories. Um, I, I see some really successful uh, influencers with, you know, 10, 20 stories in a, in a day. Um, you know, stories do disappear after 24 hours, so I wouldn't do it more, less frequently than, than, than one a day. Um, uh, Maddie, Simon, Sean, any, any uh, what, what's, your, what's your answer to, to how many uh, IG stories, uh, how often you should post IG stories? Yeah, I definitely agree with the trying to do at least once a day. And the beauty is that you can save these even though they disappear for 24 hours by adding them to a highlight. So let's say you have a highlight dedicated to customers using your products and they can be permanently featured on your page. Love that, thank you. Okay, uh, so let's talk about hack number five. Uh, use influencers to grow your following and engage your audience. This is one near and dear to my heart. Influencer marketing, know your audience and uh, feel free to use an influencer marketing platform that can help you keep all of your partnerships organized and streamlined. Um, I, I am a very, very big fan of targeting smaller groups. Um, sometimes when I talk about influencers, folks think, well, I could never get an influencer. I can't get Kim Kardashian to share my, my product. But you don't need Kim Kardashian. You know, there's a line in the, in the movie, The Social Network, you know, it's cooler than a million dollars, a billion dollars. My line's the opposite. You know what's cooler than reaching uh, an influencer with 10 million followers? Reaching an influencer with 1,000 followers that are the right followers that are your potential customers. So instead of thinking millions and millions, think micro-influencers, folks with five to 50,000 followers that are passionate about the same things that you and your brand stand for and whose audience overlaps with your audience. How to use influencers on Instagram, make sure you check their engagement rates, um, give them a unique discount code to track sales, include a disclosure. The law requires that if you, uh, if you are an influencer and if you are working with an influencer that, that um, folks disclose um, uh, if there's any payment uh, going, uh, taking place, uh, use clear and simple language and then track the success. Um, Maddie, uh, anything you want to add here? Yeah, I think to drive home the micro influencer strategy. So even when you look at something like Apprentice, so we look for college students. Um, I'm not Kim Kardashian, nowhere near. Um, however, I do have an audience of a few thousand college students whom if I post, for example, something about Apprentice on my Instagram story, the audience that that's going to reach is the exact niche that we're looking for. So though it is only a few thousand followers I have total, because the amount of those that are in the audience we're looking to reach is so high, it ends up having probably the same impact as an influencer with substantially more followers, but fewer in the select niche. So definitely thinking about how many followers of the total are within the audience you're looking for when you're trying to figure out what kind of influencer to use. Love it, thank you. Here's an example of um, trying to track success using Google Analytics in terms of um, metrics and conversion tracking. Um, looking at some performance metrics like engagement rate, brand sentiment, website traffic, and sales. Here's a couple of examples of Instagram uh, marketing, Tessellate, Beach Towel, Startup, colla collaborated with blogger and micro-influencer Christian Rizman. Um, again, just 18,000 followers, but it ended up being the perfect uh, pairing and uh, generated um, a ton of, of awareness and more important, uh, new customers. Um, here is uh, the the uh, 
the results of the campaign in terms of the actual posts. And Sarah Cuggy with uh, the hashtag uh, Albion Girls Trip. Um, Sarah's a micro-influencer known for photography and travel content. Uh, she partnered with Albion Fit uh, to do the Albion Girls Trip campaign. And here are some of the results. Um, Maddie, I'm going to have you talk through using influencers on TikTok because you definitely know TikTok better than I. I do love TikTok, sure. Um, Gen Z, big thing about us as a total, just a huge shift in marketing in general is that we don't like being sold to. So it's more so about integrating your product and a message, really, versus just kind of pushing something um, at people. And when you're working with influencers, giving them some creative um, rights to do their own thing. Um, TikTok is a very creative platform in general. So that's always um, a great tip there. Um, of course, setting rules, making sure that no FTC guidelines will be broken. Um, and then finally, really focusing on kind of in line with the creativity aspect, things that are original and trend setting, doing those trending challenges, using the audios that are going to populate the For You page, um, hashtags, utilizing the duets feature, which means you can kind of create a side-by-side -side with a video that's already been created. And especially if that video has X million views, putting your video right next to it is a great way to get exposure as well. Now, the only thing I'll say about this one is that Maddie Zeke was a pretty big uh, influencer. So this is an example of a bigger influencer, FYI. <laughs> That being said, you don't need to use Maddie Ziegler. You can use a micro influencer to do the same exact thing um, that we just saw. That to me is the perfect example of a of a short TikTok that's fun and light and gets people's attention. All right, we are going to take your questions and give away some grand prizes in a moment. Um, uh, I just want to give you uh, a word from our sponsor, if you will. This, of course, a webinar, a free webinar is brought to you by uh, Apprentice. Um, and we have a limited time offer. If you book a demo uh, or sign up now, you get your first 40 hours free. Uh, go to socialmediahacks.live. That's socialmediahacks.live uh, to sign up. And you can learn more about working with one of these amazing apprentices like Sean or Simon or Maddie or the hundreds of brilliant, brilliant college students that we have available to support you on social media, TikTok, Instagram, but lots and lots of different things. And if you go to our website, chooseapprentice.com, you can learn uh, more about that. So uh, more questions here. Athea asked about influencer management platforms. What exactly are those? I can have an apprentice follow up with very specific ones that we recommend Thea, but there are lots of platforms that help you manage communications with influencers, research influencers, um, pay influencers, uh, all, all, all sorts of different tools to uh, connect with the right influencers for your brand. Um, Val asked about marketing a service versus physical product. I mean, to me, again, it's, it's, it's always the same. Um, you're still getting people's attention. You're still trying to connect with them. Um, Maddie, Simon, Sean, any specific ideas for, mar I mean, marketing a service versus product? I also would want to know more about the specific service, um, Val, but um, what are your thoughts, team? Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. So the entrepreneur that I work with, actually, for Apprentice, um, is also a service versus a product. And really a big point that we do in our social media strategy is pushing the message um, that especially because, you know, can't necessarily model clothes if it's not a physical product, but by having a consistent message, it allows all of our content to have that underlying alignment. Um, it's also great for engaging with employees. Um, they're all super on board with the message um, and just kind of making that strategy around that since it is a service you're providing. So a good way to kind of start that thought provoking conversation is we're providing the service. So what? So once you find that, so what? That's a really great thing to start concentrating on and using social media for. Awesome. Thank you. Um, 
Anastasia asked about influencers with Linktree links. Does any followers click on Linktree? I click on Linktree all the time, every day when I'm following people. So I'm always looking at links, uh, uh, links on Linktree. How do you know if an influencer, Amelia asked, how do you know if an influencer is worth the price? Some influencers ask for thousands of dollars for one post. Meanwhile, they only have 2,000 followers. Well, I can tell you right now, that influencer isn't worth the price. <laughs> I would not. I would not I would not pay anyone thousands of dollars if they only have 2,000 followers. Um, I would start um, start small. Um, in fact, in fact, when I work with influencers, I often, uh, and when I, I guess I am an influencer, and lots of people give me free stuff. So they don't need to pay me. They just give me awesome free stuff, and then I, I post about them. Um, I, I would start, instead of paying influencers, I would actually start with just giving them your product and your service. Because if they care about you, if they're passionate about you, then they're going to appreciate that. And um, you might not be able to do that with an influencer with millions of followers, but you can do that with an influencer with a few thousand followers. I promise. I promise you will be able to find influencers that will post about you just by giving them free product or service. You do not need to pay them a dime. Um, who's focused on the B2B markets? Uh, yes, we have lots of folks that are uh, can can be can work on the B2B market here. Oh, 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 B, BNB. Bread and breakfast. Mm, I love the bed and breakfast market, guys. So feel free to reach out. Happy to have a conversation with you on that. Um, okay. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. We have another slide in here. Yeah, we do. Here we go. Let's give away a book to one person. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, get, I'm going to do two two prizes. Give away um, a book to one person that uh, posts a number in the chat uh, that I have uh, texted Sean. I'm going to text Sean a number. Sean, don't say this number. It's uh, between okay. 1 and 100. We'll make it a hard one. 1 and 100. A uh, number between 1 and 100. The first person that correctly posts the correct number between 1 and 100 will win a copy of Likeable Social Media. And for those of you watching on LinkedIn, anyone that posts a comment or question will be eligible to win and we will choose the winner a little bit later we'll choose the winner in 24 hours so if you're watching on linkedin or if you're re-watching on linkedin you, you can still win within within the next 24 hours post uh any comment or question and one of you will be randomly selected for a free copy of likable social media and let's go back and sean let me know if you see the winner a winner I don't see a winner at first. So, you know, if you already guessed, you can guess again, team. Uh, and actually, I'll give you a clue. Here's your clue. Here's your clue. I am a diehard New York Mets fan. <laughs> diehard New York Mets fan is your clue for the number between 1 and 100 to win the prize. I have a feeling somebody will get it from that. But we will see. We don't know if baseball season is coming with this lockout, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I certainly hope it's coming. Oh, we do have a winner. Yeah, I got it here. Yeah. It looks like Marianne Lilio is first. Am I right? 1140. Congratulations, Marianne Lilio. The number was, Sean? 86. 86. We have a winner. Congratulations. And um, I, I just want to thank, uh, again, a couple of people here that made this happen. Um, don't forget the giveaway, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll have a conversation with us. Learn more about Apprentice. Choose Apprentice.com, socialmediahacks.live. I want to thank my partners uh, in, for this webinar, Harrison and Morgan and Francesca. They put it all together. I want to thank Maddie and Sean and Simon who joined us live. You guys rule. Amazing Apprentices. I, I stand uh, in honor of you every single day. So, so appreciative of all of you. And most of all, I want to thank you that tuned in, that gave us 41 minutes of your life today. Thank you so much for uh, watching. And until next time, I wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and week. Bye for now. Recording stopped. <laughs>